Tamana, welcome. It's so wonderful to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be talking about your directorial feature debut in her hands. I can't wait to hear all about that process of making such a beautiful uh, film. But before we start, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like when you were younger in Afghanistan, what it was like growing up? Thank you so much. It's lovely to be here with you. Uh, some of the good memories I have from my childhood is uh, being able to play soccer on the street with boys, with my friends. Uh, and also, I used to have a bike. I used to go out every evening uh, with my uh, friends um, to bring groceries, to just go, you know, spend some time together and just be there and exist. And that very active life has continued for you. I know that you started making films at a really young age, when you were still in high school, is that right? Uh, yes, I was in 11th grade when I started. Uh, I was part of a program called Citizen Journalism and Documentary Filmmaking, and I was representing my hometown, uh, Mazar, north of Afghanistan. As that's how I started uh, making films, and it was, uh, we were supposed to make one documentary, one short documentary uh, per month from pre-production to post-production, and we were very excited about it. And it opened other doors. I was able to go to the places I have never been, and I was able to meet people, communicate, listen to them, and uh, try to tell their stories. Let's talk a little bit about In Her Hands. Can you summarize a little bit about what the film is about and, and why you chose to tell that story? Uh, the film is about a strong woman who was trying to make a change in her community. And like many other Afghans from my generation, Zarifa Ghaffari was trying to make a change in her own hometown of Maidan Shahr, Maidan Wardak. Um, and uh, she was quite famous in Afghanistan, so I was really curious to know about her more. So that's how uh, I visit her. And then we were trying to make a film not about, only about who Zarifa was, but also uh, the country itself. So we try to include other characters to be able to tell a story of the country, not only one person, uh, and, and the journey of the country towards um, 2021. I am a driver, I am a driver, I am a guard, I am a 24-year-old. I am a very happy person. I am a woman, 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 I am a woman. I had a taste of it. I will ask him to find a couple of strings. The cable is not made on her. I will ask him to find a couple of strings. زریفا برای ما، برای هم وطنای او، ایما، برای مردم یک قهرمان است. هر لحظه زندگی ما یک خاطر است با. So the film spans a period, I think you started working on the project in 2020, and Zarifa, the main character, is the youngest female mayor in Afghanistan, in the capital city of a province that has always had a strong Taliban presence. Uh, and you did go out and, and you filmed in the mountains with the Taliban. You said earlier that one of your favorite parts of, of filmmaking is talking with people and telling their stories. Mm -hmm. It must have been difficult meeting people whose views you don't share 
tell us a little bit about how you managed to build those relationships and and how how you were able to film there. Um, I think filmmaking and the storytelling is more about listening to people, understanding them, no matter how different they are. So this is how when we when I, we started working on this documentary um, in her hands. Uh, that's how it started. So with Zarifa, for me, it was easier because she was a woman, she was from my own generation, and we were trying to make a change in our communities and using different tools uh, or different ways. Uh, but then also we thought it's important to include also the Taliban because there was peace uh, talks going on between the US um, government and the Taliban, but Afghans were not included. And we as Afghan women knew that we will be more affected than anyone if there is any change in the country, especially if Taliban will come back to power. When you met with some of the senior leadership in the region of the Taliban, how did they respond to you? Were you able to have conversations? And, and did their opinion of you, do you think, change over the course of the filming? Uh, when I first started uh, con contacting the Taliban, so basically we did it uh, through the leadership. We contacted them to be able to go there and film them. Uh, it took us some time. They did not respond to messages on time, so it took us weeks and months to be to take permission. But then once I was there, because I was a woman, and then after uh, they say after 25 or more years, there was an Afghan filmmaker, a woman on the mountains with them. So they were quite shocked to see me there. So when I was doing the first interview, um, they tried to not look at me. But then I remember by the time they started, you know, being more comfortable. And then at the end, I remember when I was saying goodbye to the one of the leaders, one of the commanders, um, he was blushing and he wanted to shake hands with me. And then that time I wasn't sure. I was like, what will happen? Because I see all these other Taliban commanders and Taliban soldiers and they had their guns with them. So I was like, what if I shake hands and something happens to me? And I remember our local producer who visited Taliban so many times before, uh, he kept saying that, I'm gonna be careful, don't do that. Uh, so yeah. And did you shake his hand? Um, uh, he didn't want to do that at the end, so yeah, we left it there. Yeah. این همین قریه شما از این قریه میتونیم بپرسین که دولت برای شما چی کاری انجام داده از همین وطن هستیم با همین وطن هم خدمت میکنیم با مجاهدین سر بکم تا زمان که بکره زمین نظام اسلامی نیارم به هیچ گونه به هیچ نظام تسلیم نخواهم شدیم من معمور شدم تا ای که با مردم جبه جنگم معمور شدم تا ای که مردم را بکشم مردم را نابود کنم سرهای مردم را بزنم حتی یشهد و لا اله الا الله از دو هزار یک از روز که امریکای ها به افغانستان آمدن ما در ازی کوه هستیم جنگ I was in the middle of the day, and I was in the middle of the day, and I This is with the same people who were sending written death threats to Zarifa, the main character in the film, as early as 2017. Tell us a bit about the, the risks that both she and you faced working in a province that had such a strong Taliban presence? It, it just came back. I, I can still feel it. Um, it was not an easy experience uh, because you know that any moment you might get killed. And there were times when we filmed that night, days and nights in Maidan Wardak, I was with her, and there was fighting going on between Afghan army and the Taliban. And also whenever we were on the car, I remember she was she used to hold my hand really tight, saying that, Tabano, what if there is a sticky bomb in this side of the car or, or that side of the car? 
But, you know, when you are going through so many crises, you find ways to deal with it. And then we try to remember the good things about, you know, being there. And then I, was, I used to say that, Zarifa, we are very close to Kabul. It happened most of the time on the way between Maidan Wardak and Kabul. Or I, I remember when we were in the city and we lost a few friends in Taliban, sticky bombs, explosions, and we were down most of the time, but it doesn't mean that there was no life. We found ways to deal with it. We found ways to be happy. We found ways to find solutions, at least to raise our voice. I remember we did campaigns, we did protests uh, to make people, our leaders and the world leaders, listen to what was happening and what was waiting for us in the future. But unfortunately, I think um, we ended up where none of us were ready. هر وقت که جامعه مختلف را دیدیم از چون خواستیم تا سر اطفال خود تحصیل کنند چون یگانه راه نجات افغانستان از وضعیت کنونی تعلیم است دغه جلی په صفات چې داس می ویلی زفری می کړی لسانس لارم مسری لارم پکتیا کې بیا کوم لاره کې چې زه مکتب ته تلم په دې لاره کې یو ساعت پیاده مزل می کولو له یو خوانه بیا انتحاری ای دیر کې دی جنگونه دیر کې دل بیا پلار جان می وی چې نور مزه یا د زه د پلار نه پټ مکتب ته تلم پلار به چې وظیفه ته لاړه په پټه به ووتم دا مې د د د عمرو موندونو هیله او ارمان و چې زه به خپل کور ته مې هم په عزت او په ابرو خپل زما پلار زما مور زما په نوم زما په عزت په هر څه ډېر ویاړي لطفا په نجونو مو درس ووایي په نجونو تعلیم وکړي خو که یوه ښځه یا یوه نجلۍ باندې مو تعلیم وکړ لس نسله مو وژغورلو You spoke about how many women in Afghanistan were actively campaigning to continue to move forward and not to fall back into old ways. Hmm. As the filming progressed and you realized that the Taliban were gaining power and, and more likely to come back to a position of strength, how did that feel for you and Zarifa? Did it change when you were in villages, in cities. Could you tell mm -hmm. there was something different in the air? Uh, whenever I was in Kabul, I was not able to see the change because everything was okay, everything was all right. But whenever I went to the villages, to other provinces, and I remember coming back, I came with a lot of information, but I was not really able to tell even my own family. I didn't want my sisters to be scared of their future. I didn't want my mother to be scared of her future and my future. And if I have told them that, okay, I saw that these things were happening in the provinces, especially meeting Taliban, I knew that they were progressing. And I remember whenever I went to other provinces, um, in the past, uh, I wasn't really sure about it, but I, it was eye-opening to see all, you know, the Taliban, people like me, Ordinary Afghans, all of us, we were trying to build a country in our own ways, but ended up destroying the whole country. Um, and yeah, the, the flags changed when we crossed from one territory to another territory. There was Republic flag and then there was Taliban flag, so we knew that there is a difference. And I remember Zarifa and I and other friends, female friends, we talked about it a lot. Uh, we were like, we need to push for it. We need to do something to change it. Uh, we knew, we had the fear in our heart that Taliban might come back, but we thought they will be part of the government. Uh, and the way it happened, when the government collapsed, it was not only the government, it was the people with full of hopes and dreams and 
the future collapsed in front of us and we couldn't do anything about it. We did have fear, but we didn't know that it will end up the way it did. Hmm. And eventually it, it got so bad that Zarifa had to leave. She, she left, she came back, she had to leave again. You have had to leave and it's something that very few people uh, have to make those difficult decisions. It must have uh, taken a lot. Do you, do you plan to go back if you can? Would you return? Um, after Toronto, for one week, my heart was really calm and I was thinking about it because since I left Afghanistan, the fire was there, you know? And when I left, I left my soul in Afghanistan with my loved ones, with my country, with my homeland, with everything I had and built for all these years. Um, the way we left, we, we didn't know that it will happen. And I remember when I left, I did not say bye to my loved ones. I still remember uh, my family. I still remember my friends. Um, I told them that, you know, this is not a goodbye. I cannot say goodbye. You don't know what will happen. I will come back. I will go to the airport. I don't know if it will happen or not. I'll be back. And I was making ex excuses because I didn't want to leave my country. That was home. That was everything. Um, yeah. I kept my passport. Um, but yeah, that's what it keeps me alive. Uh, and people might have different dreams. Some people might uh, think that, okay, I want to travel. I want to make the best film. I want to do this and that. But my biggest dream is to go back to Afghanistan and live the way I used to live. We all hope that that will happen sooner rather than later. But for now, we know that the situation is very difficult uh, for, for many women. You, you came to Europe. Um, and even here, we've spoken about the everyday sexism that you experience and how exhausting it is to educate men on issues around gender equality. Um, are there parallels? Do you see any opportunities for us to learn from each other? Because I know many people in the audience will feel your pain and recognize that exhaustion. How do we learn from each other? How do we work together as women globally to create change? Uh, sexism is everywhere and we need to um, come together to work on it. Uh, but the only thing I would say that it's tiring and exhausting, but we should not give up. Absolutely. We cannot stop. So we need to um, have solidarity to work on it together, to push for it. And hearing stories like yours, like Zarifa, there's an amazing line in the documentary where we follow her in such extraordinarily difficult circumstances. And she's constantly under threat. And she says, well, men have had 40, 50 years to get this right and they haven't yet done it right. So I'm not going to give up. Is that representative of the spirit of many women that you encountered well, in Afghanistan? It a spirit of almost all the women I know in my country, including my grandmother, my mother, my friends, all of us. Because, yeah, war is ugly, and then it was the man who created the war. It was the man who made peace. We always pushed for it, but then there was no space for us on the table, no matter how hard we pushed for it. But it doesn't mean that uh, we give up and it's done. And we are, you know, we made peace with that. Um, it was the spirit of the whole country. It, it is still is, and it is the women who are resistance in Afghanistan. Today, uh, they were protesting in solidarity with Iranian women in Kabul in front of Iranian embassy. Uh, so yeah, I think the future is uh, female. It's us. And we are the ones who can make change because we don't fight we don't care about ego, we care about solutions. To all of the people listening today, inspired by your story, by the strength of women in Afghanistan, what can we do to support the struggle? You said solidarity is key to change, and I couldn't agree more. How do we work together? What can we do to keep the, the plight of women in Afghanistan 
in the news and to make sure that uh, one day you're able to return and do the wonderful work that you've been doing? Um, I think women in Afghanistan need solidarity more than anything right now. Um, I remember I was interviewing women who were protesting because I was working on a research for Amnesty International. And whenever we talked, I was asking them why they started protesting. And they said that, Tamano, we lost everything we had. We are not able to uh, work. We are not able to go out without a mahram, a man, family member. And we are not able to uh, move freely, travel to other provinces, to countries outside Afghanistan without a man. So it means that uh, Taliban do not count women as humans or equal to men. So there should be a man to validate that they exist. And uh, they said that we lost everything we had and that's why we are fighting. We are not afraid to die, uh, but it uh, makes us happy uh, and encourages us when, I, when we see women, no matter Afghans, non-Afghans from outside the country, uh, supporting us. And that's all we need. And they were thanking me all the time for doing the interviews. And they were like, you listen to us and it's important for us. So there is a need to uh, come together and support the women uh, in Afghanistan, in Iran, or any part of the world, because all we fight for is our basic human rights. I think it's really important to support the women in Afghanistan or any, part of the, any other part of the world who are fighting for their basic rights. It's 2022. I know that women, we as women, we are political, our bodies are political, our opinions, whatever we say, whatever we do is political. Women get criticized more than men, and no matter in which field. Uh, and it's really important for uh, all of us, no matter where in the world, to support those women protesting on the streets in Kabul and other provinces of Afghanistan. And one of the ways we can do this we can open a conversation about Afghanistan. So it's on the news again. So people talk about it and we don't forget what's happening there. I know that I was the lucky one who is here now, who's able to work, but I also know that it was painful to leave. Uh, uh, but for them, because they are fighting, they need our support, solidarity, and we need to put pressure on our governments, no matter where in the world. Uh, to change the policies, to put pressure on the Taliban, uh, to change their policies and make a change. I think people can start by watching In Her Hands. It really is a beautiful film. It's incredibly compelling. And for me, I found there was threads of hope in there. Um, so um, I think watching the film understanding this incredible strength of the women of Afghanistan will inspire many, many people, and hopefully they will step up and show that solidarity um, and continue to, to raise awareness of the issue. You no doubt will continue to do so. Uh, I know you have more films, I think, that you're hoping to make in the future. Um, and we're just very, very lucky to have you as such a wonderful and compelling storyteller to shine a light on this issue and, and educate us all uh, so that we can stand in solidarity. So thank you. It's been wonderful listening to you today. Thank you, Tamana. Thank you.